Hello and uh, welcome to the latest in my videos on copulas. Now, this series I'm going to be looking at vine copulas and they're a really interesting alternative to the traditional type of copula that I've covered before. Um, there's also quite a lot to learn about them. So uh, there's going to be quite a few videos, hopefully, on, on this topic, looking at um, what they are, how they're constructed, some of the terminology around them, some of the maths that you need to use to understand how to derive the parameters, um, some examples in Excel, of course, and obviously how to use vine copulas in R. So without further ado, let's uh, get into it. So first I'm going to give a recap on exactly what copulas are. And I should say this is going to be a pretty brief recap. And if it's not really obvious what's going on here already, then please do go back to the earlier copula videos so you can just remind yourself how these things work and some of the terminology and the structures and everything else. So uh, when we talk about copula, we're normally talking about um, a copula distribution function, something that checks out a probability, essentially. And the way these are formulated, if you've got two variables, is c, f of x, f of y. So the inputs there, f of x and f of y, are the cumulative distribution functions for x and y. And the output is the probability that the cumulative distribution functions uh, of two random variables, f of capital X and f of capital Y, are less than f of little x and f of little y, respectively. And in this way, it's independent of the shape of the distributions of x or y. So this is a really important part about copulas, is the, in, the inputs to them are distribution functions, they're uniform distributions, and all of the characteristics of the marginal distributions, that the shape of those distributions has been stripped out, just the order of the observations, that's all you're worried about. Um, Another recap on a bivariate normal copula, because this is one of the easiest ones to understand what's going on, I think, and is to think about um, a normal distribution as being made up of three things, really. Um, two marginal normal distributions and a thing in the middle that joins them together. And what you're essentially doing there is you're taking whatever um, marginal distribution you've got and then you're just stretching and reshaping it so that it becomes um, something else. But the, the order of the observation stays exactly the same. And this is a really important point. Again, copulas join marginal distributions based on the order of those distributions, so the distribution functions of those marginal distributions, not the value of those distributions. So bivariate is fairly straightforward. Multivariate is pretty similar. You're just going up from, I mean, most of the reasons that you start with a bivariate distribution is it's, it's, it's the most basic type of copula. Um, also, it's easier to draw a two-dimensional copula. Three-dimensional copulas and higher are pretty hard to draw and even visualize, but if you can understand what's going on with two dimensions, then moving to three dimensions um, it should be fairly straightforward. Um, if you think about, um, say, an elliptical copula, like a normal or a T copula, um, instead of having um, a two-dimensional, so um, just two variables, uh, you might have a multivariate elliptical distribution, so three or more variables, and a corresponding correlation matrix, which is no longer just a two-by-two two matrix, but it could be a three-by-three, five-by-five, or, or whatever, with all of the probabilities, uh, sorry, all of the correlations between the different um, variables that you're looking at included in that matrix. And then specified for the degrees of freedom, T, for whatever that, that, that distribution you're looking at is. On comedian copulas, it's just as straightforward to move from two variables to, to three. If you don't remember what Archimedean copulas are, go back and have a look at the original videos. They, they are straightforward, but this is going to be a very quick run through. Um, so Archimedean copulas, you start with the generator function, uh, which is denoted psi. Uh, and this turns the distribution functions into something which you can sum um, and then turn back into a joint distribution function. So it takes each of f of x1, f of x2, all the way to f of xn, so the distribution functions for each of your variables, and generates a number that lies between 0 and infinity. So distribution functions lie between 0 and 1. The uh, generator function gives you something which is between 0 and infinity. You can then just add all of these generated numbers together, so the generator of function applied to each of those 
individual distribution function numbers, and you get a result which is also between zero and infinity. And then if you use the inverse of the generator, that gives you again a number between naught and one. So you start with individual probabilities, and when you combine them, you end up with a single probability. And this is the joint probability um, C of f of x1, f of x2, all the way to f of xn. And this just shows what's happening graphically. So f of x1, apply the generator, you get psi of f of x1. f of x2, apply the generator, you get psi of f of x2, all the way to f of xn, add all those together, sum them, use the inverse of the generator, and that gives you your copula. So you start with something between 0 and 1, you end with something between 0 and 1. Um, so what do generator functions look like? Um, Gumbel copula, uh, generator function is minus uh, log of the distribution function raised to the power of alpha. So that's what you apply to each of the f of x's. And then the inverse of that to get back again. And alpha is defined in this case as 1 over 1 minus tau, which is Kendall's tau, which is a measure of rank correlation. So if you look at the average correlation of all these variables you put them together, that determines what your measure of alpha is, and that determines what your generator function looks like and what your joint probabilities look like, what your, what your copula distribution looks like. So that's all just a recap on copulas. Um, but there are some challenges with multivariate copulas, which is why we're looking at vine copulas in the first place. And they all suffer from a similar issue. For Archimedean copulas, you can only have one parameter alpha. Or if it's a, got, say, a two-parameter Archimedean copula, you only have two parameters, alpha and beta, which are the same across all of the variables that you're looking at. For elliptical copulas, you can have a correlation matrix, but you can only have one degree of freedom parameter. So what this means is that you haven't got any flexibility over the shape of the copula if it differs between different pairs of variables. So if the relationship between variables 1 and 2 has really fat tails and between 2 and 3 doesn't have fat tails, there's no way to really deal with that in a multivariate copula. You've got to take the average of the fatness of the tails and just and just live with that, which is which is not particularly helpful. So vine copulas are a solution. They seek to overcome this by using a network of copulas constructed using pairwise relationships, with each relationship defined by a bivariate copula. So this gives you much greater freedom because for each pair of relationships um, you can specify things like not just the correlation but the fatness of tails as well, the, the shape of that relationship, which is very helpful, but it does bring with it a few challenges. So the first complication is conditionality. So what we've got here is a very simple vine copula, um, linking variables 1, 2, and 3, and 3's in the middle. So it's built using c of f of x1, f of x3, and c f of x2, f of x3. In other words, you're defining the copulas joining x1 and x3, and you define the copulas joining x2 and x3. And these two copulas, these are your main levers to describe the strength of relationships between um, those, uh, those two pairs of variables and the shape of the relationship as well. But whatever you choose for that, it does imply a relationship between f of x1 and f of x2, even if you're not explicitly defining that relationship at the outset. And this needs to be allowed for because what ideally we'd like to do when we're looking at the structure and the parameters is we'd like to find those that maximize uh, little f of x1, x2, x3, which is the joint density function for all of those. Because essentially what you're trying to do here is um, you're trying to find the maximum likelihood, uh, if, or the parameters that maximize the likelihood um, of your density functions. So f of x1, x2, x3, somewhere in there, as we'll see later, there is um, an allowance for the relationship between x1 and x2, and that needs to be allowed for somehow, even if you're not defining it explicitly. The second complication is structure. So as the number of variables increases, so do the 
possible structural, a number of possible structures. So the one that we saw just over the page, that was three variables. And as you can imagine, if you've got three in a row, the middle one can either be one, two, or three. So if n is equals three in terms of the number of variables, the number of possible structures you could have is three. Um, and this formula here tells you what the number of possible structures is. Um, but as you can see, when you go to four variables, you actually have 24 different potential structures for vine copula. Five, you go to 480. If you go to 10, you've got 487 trillion, 49 billion, 291 million, 366,400 potential structures, which is quite a few. So finding the best structure can be computationally expensive, um, as, as we say. And th there are ways around it, there are alternatives that you can use, but um, it's worth bearing in mind that you can't just try every single possible commutation, uh, combination and every single type of copula in there and all the parameters you'd like to, to come up with the optimal one because the, the computing power taken would probably for any reasonable number of variables I mean it take longer than the history of the universe so far to come up with an answer so there needs to be some pragmatism about how we do get to um, deciding what our what our copulas look like and uh, we'll be covering that later as well so that's a very quick overview and a very quick recap on uh, copulas and vine copulas um, to say why we're doing it and broadly what we look like. Um, hopefully that's given you uh, enough information to keep you interested and you'll also log in to look at the next video. Thank you very much.